the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. of the Paschal Feast. Kindle the faith of the people you have made known your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all might grasp and rightly understand in, which we, in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to breaking the bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. 
They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, 
you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we celebrate the second Sunday in Easter, or Divine Mercy Sunday. By God's great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our Christ is alive, alive now, alive for us, for you, and for me. We have been born anew to a living hope. Christian hope is a gift from God, not wishful thinking. It's not wishing that we have a mild summer, that we get a good grade in school, or that we find the perfect outfit. Christian hope is confident expectation, 
confidence that a God who is unceasingly faithful, despite our infidelities, will always be there for us, will be there for us in the here and now, and will be there for us in the hereafter. Such is the hope that marks a follower of Christ, such is the hope that Jesus had. Through hope in his Father, he was given the strength to carry his cross to Calvary, strength to murmur with parched lips to his Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Such is the hope that left Calvary's tomb empty. But what about you and me, your fears and mine? What about tomorrow? The first letter of John declares, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. I want to emphasize this point. There is no fear in love. Perfect love destroys all fear. You see it all through Christian history. From the Apostle Andrew, who took the gospel to what is now modern-day Turkey, he was tortured and then tied to an X-shaped cross. While he was dying, he continued to preach the gospel. Through our own patron saint, St. John the Baptist, who was an incorruptible prophet, he preached the imminence of God's final judgment and baptized those who repented. Because of his holiness and unwavering voice of faith, he was beheaded for preaching what he believed in. His image in our stained glass window should remind us that faith does not quietly go away in the night when it's popular or socially convenient. To our modern-day Mother Teresa and her missionaries caring for the marginalized, the sick, the poor, and the dying, they did so not worrying about themselves or what may happen to them because they had faith and true hope in Christ. Perhaps we are unable to relate to them. Perhaps we just think of them as people in history or maybe characters in a book or a movie. But they were real men and women, just like you and me, who were afraid of nothing. They knew that nothing is more important than their faith, even when they were told by kings and rulers to stop proclaiming and practicing their faith or die. They chose our Christian hope. Like us, they do not take pleasure in putting themselves at risk or in pain. Pain hurts them as much as it hurts us. But unreserved love enables them to put into everyday practice the promise of St. Paul. God is faithful, will not let you be tried beyond your strength, but with trial will also enable you to endure it. Most Christians are not able to destroy all fear. We are human beings, after all, and fear is instinctive. It's nestled in our bones and strikes when we least expect it. What then? With Christian hope, you can cope, cope with fear. I mean confront fear eyeball to eyeball. You can show it to the door and slam it as it leaves. You can live joyfully as your fear melts away with the burning hope and mercy Christ offers. None of us are running towards death with open arms, and none of us look forward to illness or suffering. Still, one thing I am confident in is that when illness and dying do strike, God will be there, and I will have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear in this world. True love is the absence of fear. Fear robs today of all its joy. Easter trumpets an incredibly consoling truth. Whoever you are, whatever your pain or problem, anxiety or affliction, frustration or failure, you never need despair. Not that pain will be converted into pleasure, problems conveniently solved, and failure turned into instant success. Simply that the promise of Jesus can come true. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. No one can take your joy from you, not even a virus, nothing unless you freely allow it to. Living hope is not something automatic. Press H on a computer and out comes Christian hope. Hope is a gift that has to grow and be nurtured like a delicate flower. 
and it grows in our ongoing relationship with Jesus. We water this flower when we pray to see God in our daily lives, in good times and bad, and when we love more dearly, when we forgive and have mercy, when we practice having perfect love without fear. Living hope is not to treat Christ only as a 911 call, a Lord of emergencies only, a savior of final exams, someone you can call when living gets desperate, when human help is helpless. The God of your hope is deep inside you, closer to yourself than you are. To live with living hope is to live lovingly with the source of hope, the Jesus who died and rose precisely to give you hope. My friends, I hope to stress what is surely known to us in our intellect, but maybe not what is felt deep down inside our core, especially at this moment in time. The hope we need to face up to our most profound fears is not in the power of any human person. The hope you and I need to live in true love without fear is a freely given gift of God, a gift that is actually part of our Christian makeup, a gift we perhaps leave untapped and allow to rust. The only remedy for this rusting is an injection of love. Most of us are enclosed in our own tombs of fear at this time, either physically or emotionally. Let us absorb God's radiating love, his perfect love, which is without fear. Let that fuel our Christian hope, which is not mere wishing, but expectation that Christ is there for us always. And let us live as the Catholic Christians we are, in the absence of fear. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The risen Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and side. Let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. For the church, that as the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace and mercy of our risen Lord may spread through our world today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those awaiting sacraments, especially Amanda and Jebediah, who are supposed to get married in our parish today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will share our goods and possessions through generosity and Christian hospitality, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, 
May they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, the repose of the soul of Louis Gabriel Donre, the repose of the soul of Margaret Sianco, and the needs of the St. John the Baptist community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead, as he promised us. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you through the same risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising has restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather your people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Oscar our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior, command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. is my flesh for the life of the world. 
For those who can't be physically present with us now, let us all pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.